this is an introductory video on analytical geometry i cherry pick this question because uh, it has a lot of questions um, theorems and formulas of which i want to cover today um, so let's go ahead and get started um, i'm gonna start by reading the problem statement it says um, in the diagram k l n uh, vertices of triangle KLN of which you can see on the left hand side right um, and then we have angle LKN of angle 78,69 degrees uh, which is intersecting with the x-axis at P so angle P is the angle of inclination of line KL right and then KL is produced um, there we can see it uh, the inclination of KN is theta and then we have a point M on the third quadrant um, here is I just put it in a box right there because uh, it's not really visible and then the first question says calculate the gradient of KN okay so we have 3.1 3.1.1 it says uh, calculate the gradient of kn um, gradient is denoted by small letter m and then the two letters are the letters of the points of which the line is joining so because this is an introductory video i'm going to define every formula before i use it uh, so that you can understand what is going on so gradient by definition um, is the change in y divided by the change in x right so what is change change is when you have uh, some final point and you have some initial point right uh, there we have it x final minus um, x initial uh, but then that's more of a physics way of looking at it uh, in math, we just say uh, y2 for y final and y1 for y initial and then for x, uh, the corresponding numbers, just like you can see what I wrote there. So if we have some line AB, so this is uh, the gradient of AB. Uh, let me put a sketch. Let's say this is point A and then this is point B and we have a line joining the two right and then let's say b is made out of um, 8 and 12 and then a is made out of uh, 4 and c is uh, this is the x coordinate this is the y this is the x this is the y so when you want to calculate the gradient you have to choose which point uh, you're regarding as the first and then you choose which point you're gonna regard as the second um, you get the same answer uh, doing it in both ways so you can say point b is the second point so this is b this will be y2 this will be x1 uh, uh, x2 i meant uh, x1 and y1 so to solve the problem we have in hand uh, we have point k point k it has coordinates minus one and two and then point n it has coordinates one and minus one so we can choose uh, each point between these two to be the first and the second so let's say um, m of kn equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 uh, let's say point N is the second point, right? So if we say point N is the second point, then this will be X2 and then this will be Y2. So Y2 in this instance, uh, it will be uh, Y2, it will be minus 1 and uh, minus Y1. Y1 will be the Y coordinate of point K, right? So minus 2 divided by X2 which is 1 uh, minus minus 1 the x coordinate of point k this is going to give us minus 3 
divided by 2 uh, using point n at the second point uh, but for uh, to, to prove what you're talking about when you say it doesn't matter the order of the point let's do it the other way around uh, so the gradient of kn if you take point k as the second point y2 will be 2 and then y1 will be minus 1 so minus minus 1 and then we divide by x2 uh, will be minus 1 and x1 will be uh, 1 so that will be minus 1 this gives you 3 divided by minus 2 so the order of the point doesn't matter we're gonna still get the same gradient so if you have a line and then the points are given the best way to find the gradient is just by um, using this formula we have here uh, it's the best way if you are given uh, the points of the line but then sometimes you are not given uh, the the points maybe you are given one point or you are given something else so this formula might not always work um, maybe we'll find a problem as we are going uh, to demonstrate uh, this idea uh, that I'm talking about so let's move forward we have 3.1.2 it says that um, show that the gradient uh, oh no it says that the size of oh calculate the size of theta the inclination of kn uh, so if you look on the left hand side uh, this is the theta uh, we have here right um so the inclination what is inclination by definition i feel like that's an important uh that's an important point of which you have to start from the inclination is um the angle between the x-axis and the line so for line kn the inclination is theta as you see there but then if you look at the left hand side we have the line kl the inclination so we're starting from the x-axis and then we're moving and then there we hit here uh, we hit line K, kl right so that's the inclination of line kl um and then yeah for the y <laughs> for the y axis uh if you pay at close attention if you start from the x-axis and we go into the y uh it's an angle of 90 right so the inclination of the y-axis is 90 degrees um so to say so the question says let's calculate uh the size of theta the inclination of um of kn uh, there's a formula we use for this and uh, the formula we use is that um, tan theta equals to the gradient of uh, kn um, another point that you'll mention in this kind of questions usually the first question what you calculate on the first question will help you answer the second question and so forth so most of the time if you're solving the second question and you didn't use anything from the first question um you're probably getting lost or it's a special case uh, but then let's carry on uh this is the formula for uh, the angle of inclination like i was saying and then on the left hand side i've made it clear what we mean by the angle of the inclination the angle between the x-axis and the line of uh, interest so let's go ahead and solve it so we're going to have tan of theta theta of which is what we are interested in the angle of inclination and then it's equals to the gradient of kn we've already say we've already calculated the gradient of kn and it is minus three divided by two uh, now it's just a matter of um it's just a matter of taking tan to the other side uh, of which we do it in the name of uh, tan uh, arc or tan inverse of minus um, 3 over 2 if you put that in your calculator you will get um, minus 56 comma 30 
99, right? Uh, so every time when you calculate in uh, the angle of inclination and you get a negative value, you're supposed to add 180 degrees, right? Uh, that's that's always uh, that's something profound of which I think you should, you know, pause the video and write it down so that you don't forget it. Uh, but then if I go ahead and do that, we're going to have plus 180 there, uh, which will give us, uh, let me see. It will give us uh, 123,69 uh, degrees. So that's the angle of uh, inclination of um, line KN. Um, if we add uh, the coordinates of point L there, you know, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, calculate the inclination of, you know, that line just to demonstrate the idea. But nevertheless, uh, let us carry on. Uh, we have 3.2 uh, of which it says show that the gradient of KL is equal to 1. Um, let's look at KL. Uh, we have KL there. Uh, I've already, you know, uh, put uh, arbitrary coordinates to calculate. Um, the the inclination of line k n uh, we use the formula uh, tan theta equals to the gradient of uh, the point of interest let's just say a b right so because i use that formula there and then i found the angle to be 123.69 degrees and i've been preaching all this time that uh, the question above uh, usually answers the question that follows so I'm I'm just gonna look at that angle and look at that formula and try find a way of which I can calculate um, the the gradient of KL right uh, or something along those lines. So for KL, I don't have uh, this angle theta here. Uh, that's I don't have uh, the gradient. I want both of them, uh, but then if I get the angle theta, I can find the gradient. So let me see if that can be possible. Uh, the angle of inclination of line KL is there around uh, point P. Uh, let me just color it in blue so that you can see it. Uh, that's the angle there. Uh, if we manage to uh, calculate that angle, we can then calculate uh, the gradient of KL. Uh, but then how can we calculate uh, that angle? That angle is an angle in triangle K, P, and the point of intersection between the X, 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 and K, N. Um, and then there's an exterior angle uh, right there, uh, theta, the inclination of K, N. Um, but you, if, if you pay close attention, you will realize that that angle theta, uh, which is uh, outside of a uh, triangle KP and the intersection between KN and X and the x-axis uh, this is the intersection let me use a, a different color uh, this is the intersection I'm talking about yeah uh, this is the triangle uh, this angle Q is an exterior angle to this triangle so it is equal to K plus this angle you are interested in. So if we write that down, we get theta equals to angle K uh, plus angle K P and a uh, KPO. Yeah, that's also correct. So this angle theta is one, two, three comma six, nine. Like we said, angle K is 78 comma six, nine. Uh, plus angle KPO, that's what we are interested in, KPO. Uh, so this implies that KPO uh, is equals to 123,69 minus 78,69, uh, which will give you, uh, let me plug it in the calculator real quick, um, 123, Three comma six nine minus seventy eight comma six nine. Uh, this is uh, forty five degrees, right? 
So now we have uh now we have our our angle theta. Uh the only unknown is the gradient of which uh is what we are interested in. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Uh we're gonna get uh tan theta equals to uh the gradient of um KL uh theta um is forty five degrees uh equals to the gradient of kl so tan uh, 45 is just one so the gradient of kl is indeed one uh let's move ahead three point uh three says determine the equation of the straight line kl in the form y equals to mx plus c uh so let's write y equals to mx plus c uh, above we just calculated m so if we substitute it into the equation we're gonna get y equals to uh, just x because m is one uh, plus c so um, now we have three unknown variables um, y x and c uh, but the trick here is that if you take any point on line KL, that point will give you an X value and a Y value. And then after that, you'll be able to calculate C, which is the intercept of the graph. Uh, if we take point K, point K is made out of coordinates minus 1 and 2, of which this is the X and then this is the Y. If you substitute it in the equation, you're going to get uh, 2 equals to uh, minus 1 for x plus c you subtract minus 1 you add minus 1 to both sides uh, you get 3 equals to c right uh, so now the our equation uh, will therefore be y equals to x uh, plus 3 uh, to prove that this formula works and we didn't do anything wrong we're going to substitute the x value of k <coughs> and see if we're going to get uh, the corresponding y value. If you do that, you're going to get um, y equals to minus 1 plus 3, which gives you 2. <coughs> so as far as we're concerned, uh, the equation uh, that uh, we determined for line KL is quite right, right? Uh, so that's how you calculate uh, the equation of the line if you have a gradient and uh, another point on the line. Um, there's an other ways of calculating the equation of a line if you have other information. I'm going to give it to you all at the end of the video. So make sure you watch until the end. Um, let's move ahead. Uh, 3.40. 3.40 uh, it says uh, calculate uh, the length of kn uh, so length of kn let's take a look at kn uh, let me highlight it there on the left hand side uh, this is kn right so first and foremost we'll go back to the definition and we'll define what we mean by distance so we have some point a here and then here we have some point B. Uh, let's see, it's made out of A, B, and then point B is made out of C, D. And then the question says, uh, calculate the distance between the two points. Uh, the same way we did when we were finding the gradient, we're going to choose which point to take as the second point and which point to take as um, the first point. So if we take point B E at the second point, then the length of uh, line A B uh, will be given by uh, the square root of uh, C E uh, minus A squared uh, plus uh, D E minus B E squared. Uh, so in a way, uh, what we're just saying is that um, we have Y2 minus y1 squared uh, plus x2 minus x1 uh, squared. 
uh, this is the uh, the formula for the length of a line so you just gonna choose which point you take in at the same point as the second point and which point you take in as the first point and um you just uh, do what we've been preaching um so the question in hand says the length of kn uh so let's take k as the second point so this will be uh, x2 y2 we take n as the second point uh, so this will be x1 and then this will be y1 uh, let's substitute it into our equation uh, we're gonna get kn uh, equals to the square root of um, y2 uh, that's 2 uh, minus y1 it's minus 1 so this is just gonna be plus 1 uh, we square it plus x2 that is minus 1 uh x1 is just 1 so that will be minus 1 also um if we do that we're gonna get and uh, 3 squared that will be 90 and then this will be minus 2 to the 2 uh it will just give us 4 so at the end we're gonna be left with square root of uh, 13. um so that's how you calculate uh, the length of key and uh, it's a really um, straightforward question, uh, no trick, uh, no complications, no nothing. Uh, if this, if you get a question like this on the exam, I don't expect anything less. Um, let's move ahead and look at the following question. Uh, 3.5, 3.5.1, uh, it's it has five marks uh, a lot of people when they see a question that has five marks uh, they run away as fast as they can uh, but really uh, they're usually not that difficult so it says calculate oh okay first of all uh, they're saying that uh, kn uh, it is equals to lm uh, those are the lengths i uh, assume and then it says calculate the possible coordinates of l uh, if you look at the uh, left hand side we have l at the on the third quadrant uh so uh, it says calculate the possible coordinates of l okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to join a uh, line i'm just i'm going to join lm point lm to form the line lm right which uh, they are saying is equals to the line ln so if i do that oh okay let me use a uh, slimmer um way of writing so there is lm uh, is equals to line uh, kn right these two are equal in right so basically what they're saying is that um um kl equals to uh, lm right so this is equals to uh square root of 30 and then they're saying at uh, the positive coordinates of l right so l is what you're looking for uh, let's say this is a and let's say this is b um, so if we use uh, the 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 distance formula here uh, we already have the distance we're gonna have um an unknown for x and y uh, for this point l um let's just do that and we'll take it from there so uh for point lm uh l okay let me write ma and say the x is uh minus three and the y is uh minus five and okay let's take um l as the first point as the second point so here we have x2 y2 here we have x1 uh y1 right so the length of point uh, lm it will be lm equals to the square root of um, x2 is a uh, uh, minus minus 5 right so this will just be uh, plus 5 squared plus b uh, minus minus 3 this will just be plus 3 uh, squared uh, we already know that this is equals to square root of 30 uh, because lm is equals to kn um so so because we have uh, the equation 
uh, for point uh, for for line K L right. In place of the y coordinate of L, we're going to put the equation of uh, that line. Uh, so uh, instead of A, we're going to have uh, x uh, plus three right. Uh, because we calculated, uh, we, we determined that the equation of KL is x plus 3. Then we're going to have that plus 5 then, and then we're going to square. And then for B, we're just going to have x uh, plus 3 squared. Um, so let's go ahead and try simplify that. Um, that will be uh, x uh, plus 8 squared uh, plus x plus 3 squared um this might seem a bit complicated uh i'm sure you went hold on what's going on here uh so this kind of questions um it's it's not that tricky uh it needs you to have skin in the game if you do enough if you do an enough number of questions uh there won't be any question you don't know how to solve right uh, so this is just one of those questions that if you bump into it in the examination and you've never seen it before it's probably gonna throw you off and you won't be able to you know to answer it unless you're like an elon musk or something uh, but then anyway uh, that's how we do it uh, in place of the y you put the equation of uh, the line at that point um, and then for in place of the x you just put the x and then uh you, you take it from there you solve for x so to say so let's move ahead we have square root of 13 there which is equals to um let me you know solve this uh x plus 8 squared uh the way you do it is like you say x times x that will be x squared and then you say x times 8 multiplied by 2 and uh, that is 16 x and then you say 8 multiplied by 8 that is 64 and then you do the same thing here yeah, x by x x x squared uh, x by 3 is 3x you multiply by that by 2 is plus 6x and then nine, <laughs> 3 multiplied by 3 is just 9 so here we have square root of 13 uh, which is equals to um let's solve that which is inside the bracket we're gonna have x squared uh, we have 16x uh, plus, oh no, 2x squared, I'm sorry. Uh, so we have 2x squared. We have 16x plus 6x, uh, which will give us 22x. And then 64 plus 9 uh, will give us uh, 73. Uh, we square both sides to get rid of the uh, roots. Yeah, and then here we'll get 13 uh, equals to 2x squared plus 22x. Uh, plus 73 uh, you take uh, 13 to the other side uh, we're gonna have 2x squared plus 22x uh, plus um, 60 equals to uh, 0 um, obviously there's a common factor here yeah? so if we say x squared uh, plus 11x uh, plus 30 uh, it's actually Oh, I'm so sorry for that. Um, there we go. It was to zero. It's way much better. We're gonna have um, x plus six, um, x plus five. Uh, it goes to eleven. If you add six plus five, it gives you the middle term. If you multiply them, it gives you the third term. So x at that point can be minus six, or x at that point can be uh, minus five. Um, if it's minus 6, then what's the y? We know that y is x plus 3, right? So here it will be uh, minus 6 plus 3, uh, which will be uh, minus 3. Um, here we're going to have uh, y, which is x plus 3. Uh, it's going to be either minus 5. Uh, going to be minus 5 plus 3, <coughs> which is equal to uh, minus 2. So the possible uh, coordinates of L is uh, minus 6 and minus 3 or L uh, minus uh, 5 or and minus 2 yeah so that's how you solve that uh, is a mouthful um, 
I suggest, you know, you take it back and uh, you see me do it all over again because yeah, it's quite, it's quite lengthy. It's quite tiring. Uh, it's quite demanding. So I had to cut the video uh, because of some technical issues. Uh, but let's carry on. Um, 3.5.2, it says that um, determine uh, the coordinates of L if it is given that K L M N is a parallelogram, right? So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, join L and M. Uh, let me just uh, go ahead and do that. So this L and M joined and then I'm going to join M and N, right? Uh, M and N. And then uh, there's a line there joining L and N. And let me complement it by joining um, K and K and M. Uh, line L and N and line K and M, the intersect. Uh, there, I put the point. Uh, let's say this point uh, is Q, right? Um, because now we've deduced that uh, KLMN is a parallelogram. Uh, it is given to us. That means that a uh, point Q is the midpoint of line KM and is the midpoint of line LN. That's because it's a parallelogram. That's a property. So every time when you have a question like this, uh, you are given a parallelogram and then you have uh, three uh, coordinates on the vertices of the parallelogram and then you have one missing what you do is you determine uh, the coordinates of the midpoint uh, between uh, the two lines of which you have the coordinates for and then you use that midpoint to determine uh, the coordinates of the point you're looking for. So in this instance, we're going to find the midpoint of a uh, line KM, right? And then after uh, doing that, uh, we're gonna use the coordinates of Q to find the coordinates of L. So if you have a line KM and you agree uh, that um, the midpoint of that line is Q, the coordinates of Q uh, become, um, let's say uh, this is X of Q and then this is Y of Q. Uh, this then becomes um, X of K uh, plus X of M uh, divided by 2. Uh, and then for Y, you get Y of K plus Y of M uh, divided by 2. Uh, this is the formula when you are uh, calculating uh, the midpoint of uh, the midpoint between you know two points uh, on a line. So you're gonna add uh, the x values, uh, the x coordinates. You divide by two, then that will be the x value of the midpoint. You then add the y coordinates and you divide them by two, and that will be the corresponding y value of the midpoint. Um, so let me just go ahead and do that. So x of k is uh, minus 1 and then we add in 3 uh, which is we add in minus 3 so that's just gonna be minus 3. Uh, we divide by 2. Uh, y of k uh, is 2 and then we add in minus 5 uh, so that's just gonna be minus 5 and then we divide by 2. So minus 1 uh, minus 3 uh, that's uh, minus 4 um divided by 2 and then 2 minus 5 that's just uh minus 3 divided by 2 uh if we simplify the x we get uh, minus 2 and then the other point is minus 3 uh, divided by 2. so this is this is uh, the midpoint of a uh, line km but then the midpoint of line km uh, which we're calling q in this instance it is also the midpoint of line L M L N L N. So if you uh, use this formula and then you use uh, 
point L. Uh, let's say L has coordinate uh, A and B, right? You will then be able to solve for uh, A on L and then uh, B on L. So, you know, that's what we're going to do. So let's just uh, go ahead and do that. So uh, X of Q, um, now we're using L and N, right? N is 1 and then minus 1. Uh, equals to uh, x of l uh, plus uh, y of uh, no plus x of n uh, divided by 2 so x of q we've already determined it, it is minus 2 right uh, which is equals to x of l uh, then that will just be a we're saying l is made up of a and b and then x of n uh, we just add in 1 we divide by 2 uh, we're gonna cross multiply that will give us a uh, minus 4 uh, equals to a plus 1 uh, therefore you can see here that a equals to uh, minus 5 we take in uh, 1 to the other side so for y of q uh, we get uh, y of l plus y of n uh, divided by divided by 2 y of q is minus 3 divided by 2 which is equals to y of l uh, y of l is b that's what we're interested in and then y of n it's minus 1 right and then we divide by 2 if we cross multiply we get minus c g c equals to um 2 b e uh, minus 2 uh minus 2 yeah we take 2 to the other side we get a uh, minus 4 because it's gonna be plus 2 and then this is equals to 2b right uh, you can see here that uh, b equals to minus 2 uh, so the coordinates of point l uh, will then change from a and b to uh, minus 5 and minus 2 right so that's uh, the coordinates of L using at uh, the midpoint of K and M. Um, let, let, let's move ahead. Uh, last but not least, uh, three points Gizi. Uh, three points Gizi says T is a point on KL produced. Okay. Uh, TM is drawn such that uh, TM equals to LM um so okay let's just let's just say that uh and let's just say that this is point t right uh it seems like point t actually we know point t it's on this line is it that t is here or t is here uh, one between the two but then uh, the point we're getting to is that uh when you uh join it to tm uh this line will be equals to this line will be equals to this line um and then uh, it goes on to say i uh, can create the area of k t n oh, okay area of triangle k t n uh, so let's sort of highlight uh, triangle k t n on our diagram so that uh, we can see what we're dealing with um uh, here's k on the second quadrant uh, let me change the color um okay let's just go with this one um so okay where's my ruler um okay a lot of technical issues uh k k k t n so k and uh, let's join it with t um let me go ahead and do that yeah so there we have it and then k t n uh, let's join T and N um, so that we can have our triangle there. Uh, we have a triangle and then voila TM uh, is equals to LM uh, but in 3.5 it will say that LM equals to KN right uh, we calculated the length of KN and we found it to be uh, 13 uh square root of 13 right um for 
for line L M to give us square root of thirteen, uh, a point on line K K L. Uh, so to say, it was either it was gonna be uh, minus five uh, point, and then for X and uh, minus two for Y, and then the other point possible point could only be minus six and minus three, right? And then if uh, we are given that uh, the diagram um, KL MN is a parallelogram, then this is the point of, uh, this is the point for, uh, this is the coordinates of L, right? So the only possible coordinate for T such that uh, the length of TM is square root of 13 is minus six and minus three, right? That's the only way a uh, line uh, TM can be LM, LM which is KN, and KN which is square root of 13. So or whatever we do in here, we uh, assuming that this is the coordinates of T and that uh, TM is square root of, um, uh, yeah, TM is square root of 13. Uh, so we have uh, the length of Kn, um, we have coordinates of, okay, length of Kn is given, uh, we have determined it, we have coordinates of T. So what we can do is calculate uh, the length of Kt. Uh, if you calculate the length of Kt, and then we have the length of Kn, and uh, kn and kt uh, sandwich a tri an angle which is 78,69 uh, we can therefore use that to calculate the area of a triangle right uh, because you can calculate the area of a triangle uh, as a half a side one a side two and then you have a sine of the angle between the sides. So if we calculate TK and then we have KN and then we have the angle in between, we're gonna be able to find uh, the area of the triangle. So let's go ahead and calculate uh, the length of KT. So we have KT uh, equals to, uh, there we go, the square root of, uh, let's check K as the second point. So we're gonna have Y2, which is two, uh, minus y1 uh, this is our kt here uh, don't forget so y1 will be um, uh, minus 3 so this is just gonna be plus 3 uh, we squared and then uh, plus um, x x2 is minus 1 and then we subtract x1 so it's just gonna be plus c squared and then uh, let's solve this uh, 2 plus 3, 5 is squared, uh, it's 25, uh, minus 1 plus CGC, that's 5, and then we squared, uh, so it's 25 again, and then KT is therefore um, square root of 15, right? Uh, so, uh, and then we have the angle in between, so now we what's left is just to substitute it in the formula. So the area of triangle k t n equals to half um half a k t uh, multiplied by a k n and then the angle sine the angle of which uh, the sandwich right so a sine of a uh, t k uh, n uh, if you substitute you get equals to one over two uh, Kt is square root of 50, uh, we just determined it, and then Kn, uh, square root of 30, we already know, and then sine of uh, 70,80,69. Uh, let me put that into the calculator. Um, we get, um, we get twadafu, uh, comma, uh, five zero, uh, uh, some units, uh, squared right and then uh, that brings us to the end of the video